Hello everybody and welcome to ZTV Live. Today is Thursday, July 23rd. I'm Susan Mulligan Fleischman and I am so pleased to have you join us tonight for another edition of the Virginia Amos Show. And Virginia's guest tonight is Kelly Grant from ALX Community, a really unique business model that's really surviving beautifully in Old Town. So stay tuned for Virginia to welcome Kelly to the show. But first, we have a couple of words from our sponsors. This episode of ZTV Live is brought to you by the Alexandria Pastry Shop with fresh corporate catering. Located in the Bradley Shopping Center on King Street, the Alexandria Pastry Shop has been creating irresistible pastries since 1988. They also season, grill, and saute the best receptions and dinners in the metro area, offering gluten-free, sugar-free, and allergy-sensitive specialties. Visit alexandriapastry.com. And by Cafe 44, a stylish American eatery situated along the waterfront in Old Town Alexandria. Featuring indoor and outdoor dining, Cafe 44 offers beautiful views of the Potomac River. They also offer curbside cocktails and a full menu via contactless curbside pickup or delivery. Visit cafe44.com. And by Riverbend Bistro on Fort Hunt Road and the Holland Hall Shopping Center in Alexandria. Riverbend Bistro has carryout as well as indoor and outdoor seating, and their new summer menu is available. Be sure to check out their delicious and refreshing specialty cocktails. Visit riverbendbistro.com. If you'd like to become a sponsor of ZTV Live or place an ad anywhere with the zebra, please send an email to ads at thezebrapress.com. We'd love to hear from you. And we just have a couple of items in the news today. Alexandria's Whitaker Weinberger gained national attention when he turned four years old last September. This very young cancer survivor celebrated on his way to school with a parade of yellow cars resembling Bumblebee, his favorite Transformers character. Well, this morning, Weinberger received another gift when his wish was granted from the amazing Make-A-Wish Foundation. Whitaker wanted to renovate the Woodbine Tot Lot right across the street from his house. So in a small private ribbon cutting ceremony, the Weinbergers were joined by the family by, and by City of Alexandria representatives, including Mayor Justin Wilson and Sheriff Dana Lawhorn and the staff from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. See the full story and the video on thezebra.org. And First Lady of Virginia, Pamela Northam, and officials from Virginia Tourism Corporation recognize the city of Alexandria and visit Alexandria for their essential and strategic, strategic COVID-19 recovery programs. Mrs. Northam announced Visit Alexandria and its Great Walks program was a recipient of a $10,000 Wander Love Recovery Grant during a press conference at the Torpedo Center Art Center. Let me start that again. The Torpedo Factory Art Center. Holy mackerel. Torum, as you know, is an instant revenue generator in Virginia, and it took a blow as the pandemic swept in. In response to COVID-19, the city of Alexandria and Visit Alexandria swiftly launched a number of strategic programs, regulation adaptations, and marketing campaigns to help keep the city safe while mitigating the impact on our large community of small businesses. There's a full story of, on the zebra.org, and I urge you to check it out. And now, I'm happy to welcome Virginia to the Virginia Amos Show. Hi, Virginia. Hey, Susan. How are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Hi, everyone. I'm Virginia Amos, and um, I'm a realtor with Caldwell Banker and have the distinct pleasure of being able to um, welcome and talk to the people, the businesses, and the organizations that make Alexandria such a great place to work and live. And I can't think of anybody better than to have with us than Kelly Grant, who is the COO of ALX Community. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you, Virginia. I'm so glad to be here. And thank you, Susan and ZTV. You know, the, the funny, these, these interviews that we do, it always seem to come together in the most serendipitous way. And I was looking at Facebook one day, and there was a picture of my good friend, John Lawson, 
talking about ALX community. And I had heard of you all and it was kind of in the back of my mind. So I immediately reached out to John and I said, I need to know more about this place. Who do I talk to? So he puts me in touch with Kelly. And the next thing I know, I'm actually in ALX community <laughs> at a board meeting. So before I met Kelly. So it all comes around in a big circle and I love it. I loved the space on North Union Street. I, I mean, it was just, it was so comfortable and it is so high tech and it's so modern. I, I, I have an office, but I thought, wow, what a great place to work. So please tell us how you got started. What was the idea behind this? And, you know, where are you going with it? So thank you so much. So we really, um, I have three partners in the business and about three years ago, we all sat down and thought about what do we want to do? Like in this next phase of life, what would be the right thing to do? And what's the need that we see in Alexandria? And we looked around and thought there is a place that all of us meet and go other than maybe Landini's or the coffee shop or somewhere else. And wouldn't it be great if we provided that place to all these wonderful independent businesses, we gave them a place to meet, um, work, and we provided them a little bit much more than an office. We expanded that and we said, okay, what if we also provided them a place that they could learn? Because as a small business owner yourself and a realtor, we're doing so many things just to be able to help everyone else. It's, it's not often that we take the time to do our own personal development. So we developed a series called Talks. And with Talks, we bring all these crazy smart people to tell us about everything from health and wellness, how to eat better, how to sleep better, how to live better, which I'm probably not doing all of them well. <laughs> but, it's anybody. Um, and then uh, we talk about, you know, how our businesses should grow. Like, so what do we, should we do about Instagram? And how do we use that? How do we use LinkedIn? Um, how do we hire the right people? And how do we make sure we're growing and developing our talent? And then we thought the biggest thing we really wanted to be able to make sure we did is how do we support the community that we love so much? Um, and we do something called, um, you know, our give back program. So we thought at the heart of everything, people are, we're so wanting to give here, but we don't have a lot of time. So could we make that easier? And we do a lot of programs. So in essence, we wanted to provide a place for people to work, meet, learn, and give back. And um, that all came together with ALX, and we didn't want it to feel at all like a corporate place to work because <laughs> none of us had also wanted to do that. We wanted to be filled with the spirit that makes Alexandria unique. So when you look around the corner, you might see a can of whoop ass <laughs> in one area. And you've got all the art from local artists that come about. And we're highlighting all the cool things that are happening in Alexandria with about Gosh, right now we have about 250 unique businesses, mm -hmm. about 400 members, and we're about 65% women, all coming together under a couple of roots. That's fabulous. And as you were talking, um, especially at the very beginning about envisioning this space, I thought to myself, this is so diametrically opposed to what WeWorks did you know, I, because that was that was really one of the first big shared working spaces, you know, and, and lots of press and publicity, and then look what happened. And my guess is, is that at the heart of what you're doing, the giving back, that portion, I think, is what so many people forget that it's it is at the heart of what makes a community work. Mm -hmm. And by putting that front and center, you have really positioned yourself very differently. And you've positioned yourself for the long run. Well, we're grateful to WeWork because 
they opened a market that we wouldn't have known about, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. and so that was interesting. And then, you know, er, my early background was a lot of startups. Mm-hmm. So I've been a part of, gosh, I don't know, eight of them so far. And we, I've been a part of the place where you take VC money and then you got a lot of people telling you what to do because <laughs> you don't know yet right. how to get there. And that creates an environment I didn't want to be in anymore. Like, so we don't take that kind of money. Mm-hmm. Um, we make decisions that we think are in the best interest of the company and our members. And we're allowed to do it in a way that's more sincere um, and authentic because we know the people. So I don't ever envision um, or dream about being huge like a WeWork mm-hmm. would have been. I don't want to. We put ALX in the name because we're not really going anywhere else. Right. We're, yes, saying, we're here in the place that we love and we all live. So um, I would agree it's different, um, but those are the things that are the most meaningful to us. Uh, um, and everyone has to find their own niche. And our niche was really about pro- connecting people and giving them opportunities that they may not have gotten without meeting them. Because you said today you had your own office at, in your house, right? Right. Well, right. That's how I started. Um, my first business was in my home, and I'm a social being. And I used to walk my dog in North Carolina where I had moved because I didn't know anyone. And I would try and bump into people. <laughs> so I, mean, like, I work all day. I work all night. I know no one. I'm in this house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was harder to do. So tell me, tell us how the space works. Let's say somebody wants to come and they want to join. What does that mean? Uh huh. So uh, Alex Community, you're exactly right, is a membership. So it gives you the opportunity to join a community. And then you get to decide how you want to join. Mm-hmm. So we have people that just decide, you know what? I, I don't want an office. I want to work in shared space. And we have 25,000 square feet of that space. So lots of room to do social distancing. They can work um, in an, a shared office. The, the space that you see behind me is what we call our town hall, which is this grand, big, open space that walks right out to the waterfront, that walks into our patio. Um, that you're steps away. So they can work anywhere in the space that they want with about 11 phone booths to make private calls. So that's one way. The other way they might decide is, I want my own office. You know, I want to be able to have a door and I want to close it. I don't want to move my things all the time. I want to set up shop and I want to grow my team. And we've got a number of companies that come and do that. So um, let me think, about 140 of our our companies are all um, in space. So they've elected, instead of the older traditional way, I rent an office, I sign a lease for 10 million years, and I pray that I've got enough people that'll go into it. <laughs> so there, with us, you can do that for a month, two months, a year, or two years. Then we have people that just need meeting space. Yeah, like, so absolutely. They, you know, there's not a lot of space here in Old Town um, and Alexandria. So we opened the first conference center in all of Alexandria that was meant for people to use. And we have 11 conference rooms that are all state of the art. So they can join by renting just one space or becoming a member. So they get discounts on all of those things. We have people that um, hold their home is their office and their office is their couch, but they don't want people to know all that. So we we have a virtual office solution, which allows them us to receive their mail, their packages. We become their Google address so they can protect their own privacy and as well as establish that. Um, And then we also, when we're not in the middle of COVID, (laughs) um, we do a lot of events because we've got this gorgeous space that people want to use that doesn't feel like a stuffy hotel or, um, and becomes a lot more affordable because people can bring in their own catering. 
Mm. They don't have to pay a restaurant price to, you know, pour a glass of wine. So um, those are just mm. some of the ways that people can work with us. And um, we like the flexibility of all of those different ways because um, it gives people a wide range of opportunity. Well, you really, you've kind of hit on two things here. And one is the flexibility, which in the past five months has become such a crucial part of how we live and work. Um, pivot, it was big, <laughs> the big word for so long because people were having to make just turn on a dime changes about their life and how they went to the grocery store, or how they were working, whatever they were doing. So to have that flexibility in within a space is wonderful. And ha how has the, the virus affected you? And what I think about is the people who are still not going to be going back to work for another six months. As a realtor, we hear, I, I just um, helped a couple buy a house. She's a consultant and is used to being on the road five days a week, and now she's not. And there was no room in the condominium exactly. for her to be a consultant. So it, it has to have trickled down or certainly moved you all. We've been really lucky with that, Virginia, because um, a lot of the co-working and shared office spaces around the um, country are somewhere between 30 and 70% down in business. Wow. We're actually up. Uh, uh, and, and a part of that was because we're so ingrained in the community. We mm -hmm. took real proactive steps very quickly because we don't need to wait to have anybody tell us what to do. We were able to do it instantly. We changed the design. We implemented really stringent cleaning standards. We operate with um, a lot of technology so that everything is um, touch free. Um, so I can go on about that for a little bit, but what I will tell you is that a lot of people whose offices are not going to open and their homes are not going to be, they're, we're not conducive. You know, yep. like we've got kids running all around. We have, you know, not enough space are coming in and finding, hey, it, they don't might not want to do it, commit to a longer period of time. And we make that really easy. You could rent an office for the day or you could rent it just for a month and just decide how it works best for you. And we're going to be flexible with that because we want people to be safe and productive at the same time because you know, um, everything from lightning fast, you know, Wi-Fi to all of your coffee, to all of the conveniences, to the printing, to everything you might need at your fingertips. You don't have to think about that because we've already done it. You don't have to think about what your furniture is going to look like because we've done that. <laughs> so literally you walk in, plug in and you go and um, we'll support you in any way that you want. We're actually right now even um, researching the idea, and I, I ask people in the audience to think about this, is that we've got parents that aren't prepared <laughs> to, you know, you know, spend a whole year um, homeschooling. So we're thinking about using part of our space to set up learning pods for, you know, students that are older because we couldn't really do young kids but we could probably create those learning pods in social distance spaces, help them get tutors so they can use those shared resources and make the best use of it and then work <laughs> so they don't have to go anywhere else. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think you are so right on point. And, you know, Alexandria does have some big houses, but for the most part, our houses tend to be smaller. Um, in Old Town, we certainly uh, have smaller spaces and older spaces. So the technology that you're talking about, it's not just a given that any meeting room you walk into is going to have the technology 
that you have come to expect. I would agree. I um, lived um, in Cameron Muse. I just moved um, mm -hmm. recently, and I had self phone boosters in every room of my house yeah. uh, because I couldn't figure it out. I had Verizon coming out and putting boosters all over my house because the Wi-Fi wasn't right and I'm conducting business. So I'm, I'm on the phone with CEOs of companies talking to them about, you know, how they're going to grow their business and I'm hanging up on them. <laughs> so, and I think like, this is not normal. Like we have to be able to do that. And that's a little bit about the historic nature of our town. Yeah. So well, we've got to figure out ways to make that work, but we've done that all. So people don't have to think about that so they can walk in and just be productive right away. Um, and how nice, because I mean, previously, if you wanted meeting space, you're talking about renting a soulless hotel room that <laughs> where you then paid extra for every single thing that you mm -hmm. wanted into the space. So, you know, Thank goodness, I mean, that you just plopped down on Union Street and made it so convenient to to be innovative, to be productive, and the learning pods. What a brilliant idea, Kelly. We were talking to our uh, daughter and son-in-law who live in Orange County, California. Mm. And our grandchild was supposed to go into first grade this year. Not happening. I know. And they are going to do, with probably three other families, a learning pod at their house because they need to. Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm trying to connect with a number of different people. So I'm hoping you and um, Susan Zebra might help me figure out, because, you know, as someone who doesn't have children, I don't know all the things right. that they're supposed to do. I know I have all the tools, so yeah. I want to make sure that I'm really thoughtful and I do the right thing for all the members and these potential um, future members so that they feel really comfortable and that I hire the, like whoever those people are, that they can be right, that they can feel really comfortable. And then the other thing you mentioned would be like, so, when you think of a meeting or you think of a space, like going into a hotel, it would cost me $5 for my Coca-Cola. Yes. <laughs> and um, by the way, that's how they make money. So I'm not making fun yeah. of them at all. I, I mean, that's their business model, but that's not how we make money. So bring in your own Coca-Cola if you'd like. <laughs> um, and if you're conducting a meeting, you can cater it, buy things, bring it in because that shouldn't be the driver. The expense of catering shouldn't make you not be as oh. productive as you want to be. Yeah. So we put a little catering kitchen in so that all those things can be cold and fresh and we can help organize those things as well. So we were thinking that through um, ahead of time because those were the kind of things that were bothering me when we were growing businesses and I was trying to put teams together and I was laughing to myself saying, oh my gosh, it's going to cost me a thousand dollars for the day to teach 40 people like the, I, I mean, I, if I had that money, um, I might hire more people. <laughs> so like, yeah. would it make more sense that I do something with it. Um, that's more productive. Yeah. It's crazy. And you're absolutely right. Um, and I, I, that, that was a perfect part of last Sunday was that, you know, we could get up and walk around and bring something in or, you know, go and get something out of the kitchen. Uh, plus, it was just a, a terrific space. Um, and the technology is just, oh, great job. Well, it, we tried to make things a little funky. So as you probably yeah. see if I can, you're seeing the breakout area. I don't have a picture of it. But all around that breakout area, you might notice some art. Well, all that art comes from local artists, all Alexandria based. Um, and you might have noticed Virginia, when you walked in, there was um, a sculpture. Yes. Um, okay, so let's give that great, air, that story. And I'm gonna welcome people to come in and see it because it's amazing. So um, a young, a, a wonderful man named Noah, who's one of the sanitation workers for the city, ran out of money for paint and so he started making um, these wonderful sculptures out of recycled materials 
oh they saw God. every day. And he's now had 10 shows, <gasps> amazing, uh, amazing artist. And he donated two of those structures to ALX community, although they are for sale if they'd like, oh. um, for us to show. We have a big elephant at our entrance, which I know corporately makes no sense. Um, he named it Elephant. We lovingly call it Lucy. <laughs> um, that's our nod to South Jersey because they have a big Lucy statue of an elephant. And then right when you walk into our conference center, um, he built this wonderful creature that he called Beast. We kind of didn't think that fit with our vibe. So it's all made of bottle caps. So we call him Cappy. <laughs> so Cappy's the greeter. And then you walk in and you're going to see art from all different artists all around. Um, because that is one of the things that when you're local um, and you build relationships with people, like people say they're hyper local. Well, I mean, I live across the street. So like it doesn't get more local <laughs> than walking out and understanding who and where people are. Um, and our hope was that we can showcase all of those things and do it in a fun way that makes people feel playful with colors and light so that they don't feel like they're just walking into, you know, a plain white box. Right. Well, you've done a, you've done a great job and I love the industrial vibe uh, in the ceiling there. Um, now I know you started out what on, on Lee street. Yeah. Um, so our first ALX, opened um almost three years ago today um it was um a at 106 north lee and um let me think so it was the old handelors building oh and sure. so um if for those who don't know handelors was a wonderful dress shop and yeah. at the time she just decided i'm done and so well, i don't Oh, right still, shop, yes. Yeah, you still love to go by the windows. You're correct. So really beautiful. So Scott Shaw, um, who is my partner and also um, the partner and founder of ARP Restaurants, bought that building. And he okay. started noodling around, what should I do with this building? Um, should I have retail pop-ups? Should I have a food hall? What should I do with it? And I'm so grateful because we worked together for so long that he invited me into that conversation and he kept asking what I want, like, would I be interested in any of those things? And I was like, no, I don't want to do those things because I don't know them. And I don't think I'd add value to that. Um, and then we came up with co-working and we thought, okay, that's a perfect solution in a place that has so many wonderful small businesses. So we went out to make it a multi-use building. So we have South Block Juice with whom I can't even say enough the nice things about Amir, the founder. Yes. Um, so built the business from scratch, making juices in his house, um, and now has 11 um, wonderful business, uh, 11 wonderful places, building one block at a time. Um, we opened two yoga studios, and we started with a pop-up um, retail store. And then we opened the co-working community upstairs. And, you know, when you open a new business, like many people have either know someone or done it themselves, you're scared. Like, <laughs> you know, are people going to like it? <laughs> Did you do the right thing? You don't know. And so, um, and you try ahead and tell people, and I'll give you the best example um, of a funny story that happened. So those of you may know Rick uh, Melbeck. So he is um, owns Sonoma Cellars. And so I was pulling up to this big construction site that looked like a mess. And I'm all excited to meet my neighbors. So I walk over and I'm like, hi. And he was so kind, as he always is. And he said, tell me again what you do. Oh, why, wait a minute, don't tell me. I remember, you're the place that people go when they have nowhere else to go. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, yes. you know, we're not a homeless shelter, although we're going to probably support a few. <laughs> you know, like, we're going to be the home of small businesses. And um, Rick has been a partner, um, and we've done a lot of work together since. So, um, But it was a funny story. So with, when we opened, um, within 
about 60 days, we were 90% full. And um, at 90 days, 100% full. So oh. we started expanding um, after that, but we only had 15,000 square feet. <laughs> so there was only so much room to expand um, that we started looking for another space um, to help our growth and to help more people because people wanted to join us. And we came across um, the Torpedo Factory building. Um, so right next to the Torpedo Factory Art right. uh, Center is the old administration building, which is not old at all. It's gorgeous with these beautiful views of the, of the water. And the, the first floor, you couldn't see the water. The Our entrance was brick, so it looked horrible. And it was like a ton of these businesses all over the place and we said well what if we open it all up and we blast through we open the doors we build this gorgeous space you know hopefully people would come <laughs> and um we were lucky that we found that people trusted us and um we have been growing since that period of time but it was the first early days at Founders Hall. Like even the first week or two, I was like, like you know, I'm nobody likes me. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden people started finding us and they were like, Oh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> like I understand yeah. what you're doing. Um, and it was been a lot of fun since. All right. Well, um, like I said, I love this space. I can't wait to come back. Um, I admit to not knowing about your talks, but I am going to find out more because that's just kind of right up my alley. Um, I love learning from other people and just getting the energy from other people. Um, and so that's, that just sounds like something that um, I really want to investigate and plunge into. So if somebody wanted to find out more about your space, AL community. What is the best way to get in touch with you? And um, let us know. So I will tell you a couple of things that are really easy. Okay. So um, alxcommunity.com is our website. Okay. And anyone could go on today and even take a virtual tour. So we've got a video tour, we'll do virtual tours so people okay. could feel comfortable. Um, they also are always welcome to stop in and see, um, see us um, and also think about if they wanted to do a talk and they had an interesting subject like tonight, our subject is processing the social landscape through the lens of our soul because you know, we're at a place and um, in the community and in the country where we're experiencing things very differently than we have before. And it's time for us to be really thinking about, you know, what are we going to do with all these things that are happening? And, you know, um, a lot of people have taken to protesting and that's one means, but we're thinking about what comes after that. What are some of the changes that we might want to take and our speakers walking us through that tonight so that we can start really thinking about what that looks like. We also do a lot of those talks with Act for Alexandria um, so we're opening up all of those, how to be a good ally. And then what are the next steps? Because really as, um, business people, we want to think about not just also learning, but what do you do next? <laughs> like, so, you know, what are the things that you might actually be able to do? So we know people have a little zoom fatigue at this point. So we're looking forward to the days where we might be able to get together um, and do those talks um, in person. But until then, we're keeping our series um, together and introducing interesting topics and finding new ways for people to give back. Like, so, um, Virginia, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, volunteer Alexandria, um, you know, are making masks for people um, that may not be able to afford them. So yesterday we made 300 of them. Um, tomorrow we'll make another 300 um, and then we distribute them. Um, we have made to date about 18,500 sandwiches for the homeless and kids in need. 
Um, so that is not something we could do today. So now we're thinking about how do we fund that? How do we get the right funds in the right place? Because, you know, we may not be the person that may produce them, but others can. So those are the kind of ideas that we're looking at. In addition, um, the National Breast Center Foundation, they can't do their walk the way that they've done it before. So we're all breaking out and doing individual walks so that we can do it in a way that makes sense and we can keep the good works of the doctor moving forward because today there are 300 women who can't get a mammogram mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have insurance. And the state of Virginia um, and DC have made mammogram vans only eligible for people with insurance. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> so, yep. And, and well, we can work on the long-term lobbying, we can work on the short-term problem. And the short-term problem is it might cost $300 per, per person. So let's raise those funds and make sure that more women um, and people in need get help. And when each one of us do a little bit, it doesn't take a ton. Like we, you know, it, you know, it will rise all the ships together if we all just take a step. Yeah, I was going to say it's that it's that rising boat, and I don't think we perhaps have ever had a time in history when there were so many opportunities and so many ways to be creative and and just really looking uh, just at everything a little bit differently. And the new norm. I mean, there is no normal anymore. Right. So the good news is that you get to apply that to absolutely everything, whether it's education or work or philanthropy. And wow, what great news. Um, and you all are certainly leading the way. I absolutely love it. And um, I can't thank you enough for being with us tonight. It's absolutely been educational um, and enlightening. And I can't wait to find out more and I uh, look forward to having you back with us sometime. Well, Virginia, I am so honored that you asked. I really appreciated um, the time that we spent. I'm looking forward to having you back. And I've worked with the zebra for a long time and I'm grateful that, you know, they connected us. And of course, John Lawson, I couldn't even say enough nice things about him. Like, Absolutely. He's almost like, he's like a walking human, wonderful, <laughs> Um, person that does all the things right so good news to John and anyone else that's out there if they have thoughts about learning pods thoughts about talks thinking about really how they might want to get out of their home want to feel more comfortable um, feel very com feel very comfortable even reaching out to me my name is Kelly it says K-E-L-L-Y and it's Kelly at ALXcommunity.com so um, it's really easy I reach for all the yeah. right back out and visit us online at um, alxcommunity.com. Okay, and I'm going to come down and have a cup of coffee with you sometime soon. Oh, please do. Oh, well, I will. I'm going to walk down from where I, where I have an office now and <laughs> come down to your office, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a good time. So, thank you again, Susan. Thank you so much for being um, our guiding light behind the scenes here. We appreciate it. And until next week, everybody, this is the Virginia Amos Show, and thank you for being with us. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Virginia. And Kelly, Kelly Grant, thank you for a wonderful interview, and I'm just really um, so impressed with all the work that you're doing and your good ideas moving forward. And as Virginia mentioned, that creativity and, and moving everybody forward and, you know, the rising tide, lifting all those boats, so, so necessary. So thanks for coming on the show, and I, too, I'm going to go check you out because I've been working at home in my office for 20 years and I would love a new view. So I think I just might, I think I just might look that up one of these days. So thank you both Virginia and Kelly. You guys have a great weekend. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Well, that was really, uh, what a wonderful show. Uh, really great to see all the great work ALX community is doing. And, uh, I, wasn't kidding. I am definitely going to gonna, gonna uh, look into it and check them out. And that's going to do it for us this week for ZTV Live. Thank you so much for your time and for tuning in and joining us and learning so much about 
everything in Alexandria and all the people, these individuals who work hard and add to the community and make this really the special place that we all know and love so well. Um, if you have any ideas for good news, you've seen acts of kindness, you have a really cute dog, send us a picture. We'll put them on air. We would love to, to share your good news with everybody else. Um, next week, Steve Hauck will be here with Music on Mondays. We'll have Ralph Peluso on Tuesday, Jane Collins on Wednesday, Virginia Amos will be back on Thursday, and I'll also be here with you also. So, in the meantime, until we see each other again, remember to be the good news in someone's life.